Welcome everyone. With this video, I'm going to start the test series for freezing the water using five different Peltier coolers. And in this video, I will uh, test the TEC12703 unit, which is the 3 ampere unit. And I have to note here that uh, some data sheets say that this unit is actually 4 amperes. Mm. So that might cause some confusion and maybe that's why I was able to determine the minimum temperature uh, for cooling uh, for this specific device at uh, 3.4 amperes because I haven't reached the maximum uh, current of it at uh, 3 amperes. But uh, it doesn't matter now because I will not use this at uh, its maximum current but I will use it at 3 amperes. And if you check uh, my videos where I explain why you cannot use this uh, Peltier cooler for air conditioning, then uh, I also told how to uh, read and understand the performance charts of these coolers. So I did the same practice here or exercise. And uh, I said that now we can see that we are roughly around 25 degrees. So I overestimated this and said that I would like to create 30 degrees uh, delta T. So I want to go down to zero degrees Celsius. I don't want to freeze the water and make it into solid ice. I just want to go down to zero degrees Celsius. So what I will do, uh, I will just cool it down until that and we will do some readings from the different therm thermometers. So at uh, 30 degrees Celsius delta T, I read the uh, cooling power at 3 amperes and then that gave me 19 watts. It's not a huge number, but uh, this is a very small unit. So what I will do, I will uh, turn on the power supply, I will set the power supply to 3 amperes and I will let the system running and we will see that uh, it will take I don't know how much time to cool down this uh, system. And we know that in this water tank we have 100 grams of water and uh, we have 87 grams of aluminium because we also have to cool down the aluminium so we also have to consider that. And based on very simple physics, very simple formulas, we can actually calculate the amount of heat or the amount of power needed to cool down those two systems or two bodies uh, to zero degrees Celsius. So I will do those calculations after I finish this uh, test series and uh, I will compare those calculated numbers with the measured numbers because from the measured number we will have uh, the amount of watts spent uh, to run the device and we also have the time so from those two uh, values, we can also calculate some sensible numbers and uh, we can compare these two. So what you can see here, I have a watch so that will just uh, help us to keep track of the time. We have this thermometer and as usual, uh, this is measuring the most important uh, part. And in this case, it's measuring the top surface of the water. Why top surface? because uh, I assume that if the top surface is uh, at uh, zero degrees, then the wall amount of water is at zero degrees. And I say this because there is no stirring or mixing. And I think, or again, I just assume that uh, the convection or self diffusion or whatever it is called, induced by the temperature differences between the bottom layer and the top layer of the water is not a significant factor. So this uh, liquid will not mix itself if I want to uh, say it like that. So we will just measure the top surface and then we have the two other thermometers and then we have a green wire that's the temp one and that is measuring uh, the temperature inside the corner of uh, one of these uh, screw holes uh, in the aluminium uh, tank. So that will basically give us a feedback about the body uh, temperature of that aluminium 
And what I expect is that uh, since aluminium is a better heat conductor, first that uh, body will reach uh, zero degrees and uh, uh, it will reach the zero degrees quicker than the water and then uh, the water inside will be catching up, let's say. And we have the white wire and that is just measuring the outlet temperature of the CPU cooler, which is cooling the hot side of the Peltier unit. So basically this is all. And uh, just again, just to uh, repeat, so this is a polystyrene foam and I covered it with a plexiglass. So you can see the reflection of my camera and the light. And uh, inside this heat uh, box or uh, cooling box, I have the 87 grams of aluminium and 100 grams of uh, water. It might be the case that uh, there can be some differences in uh, the heat which is escaping or, or something and that can create some uh, surprising values at the end, but uh, I don't think that uh, this is a bad system to, to study. So what I will do now, I will uh, turn on the fans and then I will turn on the power supply, set it to 3 amperes and then I just start the test. And I don't know how long uh, this test will be, so I will switch the camera into time-lapse mode. So until I reach the zero degrees, uh, I will just show the uh, footage at an extra quick uh, speed. And then after I finish the footage, uh, I finished recording the video, I will come back and uh, do some calculations and some, and uh, I will discuss some conclusions. So let's uh, start the test. So as you could see from the screenshot, uh, we reached zero degrees uh, with the water. Of course, there's a slight difference in uh, temperatures when you are reading them uh, with uh, thermocouples, but I can already see the ice forming and uh, I now don't care about the insulation that much, but in the middle, I can see the ice. So I try to poke it here this is actually ice at the, at the tip of this uh, wooden stick. So the ice, of course, the, here is the other side of the Peltier, the cold side. So that's why the ice forms there. But uh, then you can see that now it's one degrees. But uh, I would say that uh, now as the hot side temperature is at 30 degrees, and this is like pretty much one degrees, 1.5. We were able to uh, create the delta T that we wanted. So now the hot, hot side is 30 degrees, let's say, because that's what we read as the outlet temperature. And the cold side, which is this uh, water's uh, side, is uh, one or zero degrees, somewhere there. So now we can sort of calibrate this thing that uh, we say that if uh, temp one, so the corner there reaches roughly four degrees, we can say that uh, the water is somewhere around uh, zero degrees Celsius. Uh, it would be nice to use another thermometer just to be sure. But uh, this is what I have now. We are more or less uh, close to the uh, delta T equals 30 degree. So that was my goal and we reached it. So now I will do the calculations. So this is the calculation part of the video that I promised. So we have the performance curve and it is described at 27 degrees Celsius. I took this instead of the 50 degrees Celsius curve because this is much more closer to the actual uh, hot site temperature. So we might expect a bit more precise uh, values. So we said that uh, we will go for 30 degrees delta T. And then uh, as I showed it in uh, my previous video, uh, we have to draw the vertical line. So we just go up and uh, draw this line and see uh, where it uh, cuts the desired 
uh, current line and I said that we chose to go with 3 amperes so we go until the red curve here and uh, when it is touching the red curve then we take uh, a left turn and draw a horizontal line which will cut the uh, QC axis which is the Y axis here and I, I can say that this is roughly 19 uh, watts let's say so I wrote down all the data and all the calculations so uh, we know that we go for uh, 30 degrees Celsius and our QC at delta T equals 30 degrees Celsius and uh, I equals uh, 3 amperes I write this down as well then we have uh, 19 watts and then I uh, told you the details of the objects that we are cooling so we have um, 87 grams of aluminium which is the tank and it has a specific heat of 0.9 kilojoule uh, over kilogram times uh, Celsius degrees uh, so we know these values and then we know the water it's roughly 100 grams uh, as I said and it has a much higher uh, specific heat uh, 4.18 so we know this and then uh, we have this formula which is uh, uh, which gives us the heat required to change the temperature of uh, a certain object by a certain amount of temperature so q equals cp times m times delta t so we have the specific heat we know that we know the mass of our object and we know the delta t which is uh, roughly 30 degrees so i just calculated this uh, in a very detailed way for the aluminium so I substituted this value, uh, the CP, the specific heat, and then the mass. Uh, here you have to do a conversion for the mass. So observe that uh, this is kilograms uh, instead of grams. And then the uh, temperature. And just to be sure, we can do the simplification with, for the units. So kilogram, it just uh, goes out and the Celsius goes out as well. So we stay with this uh, kilojoules. So we have 2.35 uh, kilojoule uh, as final result. And uh, I converted this number to watt hours because this will be a very interesting number for us uh, for some reason. I will show you in a minute. So I did the same exercise for the water. So this uh, represents the numbers for the water. And here you can see that it's a much higher amount of heat. So it's much easier to cool down the block of aluminum uh, in this case than the slightly uh, more amount of water. And then you can see that this is uh, 3.49. So uh, we heat up the wall system. So basically we just have to get the sum of these two numbers, which we have here. I just frame it so you can see it better. And then uh, we know that we can provide 19 watt per hour basically so that, that is basically uh, said here because uh, the let's say cooling output of the Peltier device at 3 amperes when we try to provide a 30 degrees delta T uh, is 19 watts so we run this device for one hour and then it will be 19 watt hour but uh, we know also that the heat needed uh, to get our water plus uh, aluminum to zero degrees is uh, roughly 4.14 watt hours then we can uh, see what is the ratio between the uh, 19 watt hours and the 4.14 watt hours and that is basically uh, 4.59 so you have to divide one hours or 60 minutes basically with this number and you can you can get the time which is required to reach uh, the 30 degrees delta t so i just did that division here basically so i converted the one hour to uh, minutes so 60 minutes and i divided it uh, by the 4.59 and that is roughly 13 minutes and now uh, i just uh, check the video and uh, note it down all the values at uh, each mm, minute so this these are the data from that uh, time-lapse video and you can see the hot side 
is quite stable and it is really uh, uh, around 30 degrees so that's very nice and then we have the corner temperature and then uh, we also have the uh, water temperature and in this case uh, it might be different uh, the water temperature can be lower than the corner temperature because this water temperature was uh, close to the bottom of the uh, heat heat sink or, or close to the bottom of the uh, tank where I stored the water because I used the fourth uh, thermocouple as well and that was the one which was touching just the surface of the uh, water but uh, what is important here is that we start to see this curve to flat out in this area and that is here let's say 14 minutes uh, where it starts to happen so that roughly 14 so this might be not the most uh, precise uh, evaluation of this data but we can see that it's uh, 40 minutes so when we get this 13 and 14 minutes we are quite happy because these two numbers are very very comparable to each other and then we can see that uh, the performance chart or performance curve works so if we read it properly and we just follow the instructions basically provided by the performance chart uh, so we use the delta t the current and the qc as it's uh, prescribed by this uh, very very simple uh, chart here and we use some very simple physics and uh, mathematics to calculate the amount of heat that we need and then we just uh, use some logic to convert the uh, watt hours to sort of watt minutes or <laughs> something like that uh, we can uh, calculate this uh, time and uh, we can also uh, prove that this time is true true by actually measuring the same system that we just calculated here so this is like a very nice uh, experiment for physics that uh, physics uh, works both on paper and both on your desk in an experimental setup and we saw that uh, the system was not perfect of course so there were uh, leakages uh, regarding the heat and so on and I haven't measured the temperature quite precisely so that can be improved but uh, this is just to give you some impression that yeah you can do physics at home and also you can uh, pretty much calculate the things uh, for, for the, your Peltier device. So I just want to conclude this video. So I hope that uh, it was useful and you can use this in your experiments or in your calculations. And see you in the next video.